What's up everyone? Well, today I'm gonna to do what you guys asked for and that is to actually repot this uh, and I'm gonna put it in this Anderson flat. The great thing about Anderson flats is that they, ha they have a mesh bottom. So unlike a pond basket, they don't have a mesh side, but because they have a mesh bottom, it has some of the same benefits and you get minimal uh, root circling. They, the trees do tend to stick to the ground though sometimes. So what I've done is I've, I've drilled a hole at each of the four corners of the flat and it's pretty tough plastic. One of the reasons I like these is that they don't break down after just a year or two out in the sun. Uh, it's, it's definitely pretty tough stuff. And I've also got a foundation spike here. Now, if you're not familiar with the foundation spike, these are used when creating concrete forms for uh, building foundations. I guess that's why they're called foundation spikes. And you can usually pick them up in the cement or aggregate section of most home centers. The great thing about them is that they're, they're it's like a three eighths inch thick piece of steel, uh, kind of like rebar, but it has holes drilled in it at 90 degree angles along the, the most of the length. And those are so that you can put a screw through there into the forms, but we're gonna use that to anchor it into this container. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick, it has a, a sharp spike. I'm just gonna set that into one of the holes in the bottom of the flat. And then I'm gonna stabilize this in the flat <clears throat> using these two pieces of aluminum wire stuck through the holes in the spike. All right, so if you're telling yourself that that foundation spike is not straight, you are absolutely correct. And the reason it's not straight is that I don't want a straight tree. And because this tree has uh, almost a one inch thick trunk here, I'm not gonna try to wrap wire around this because I would need to use really big wire and smash down a bunch of these needles. Um, I mean, I could use big wire, but I don't really see the point in doing it. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use this uh, foundation spike as my bending mechanism, uh, just like you would do maybe if you were doing heavy bends on an older tree. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim off and kind of splay out some of these roots because I'm putting it in this giant container because I'm planning on actually making a land landscape scale tree out of this. So the, the small turn that's here at the bottom is something that I could use if I cut off all of this and started regrowing this. But in this case, I've been meaning to start some landscape style trees and that means that this is a good opportunity. Just like in different size bonsai, when you're working with landscape size trees, you need to think about what is the tree going to look like as it's as it's completed or when it's completed and think about the the scale of the curves compared to the overall scale of the plant so if i were to just put a bunch of i mean i can't do it now but if i had a tree and i had a bunch of wiggles down in here and i was like that would make a fantastic bonsai but it wouldn't make a very good landscape style tree because all of those wiggles are just gonna be in the bottom foot of a tree that might end up being six or nine feet tall. So with a large tree like this, uh, the primary thing that I'm concerned about is just getting the nabari started. Landscape trees, uh, the nabari is not quite as important as it might be in a bonsai, but it's still something that you wanna be able to showcase in a high quality composition. And I'm gonna go ahead and comb out all of the roots on the tree. Because the bottom of the flat was flexing a little bit more than I wanted, I've added this prop here to keep everything a little bit more uh, sturdy and it feels quite a bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my tree. Now I've combed out the roots and I've cut the, the biggest two roots a little bit shorter than the ones that are sort of like medium size. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of stick this in here at an angle and see if I can start to 
uh, start to stabilize it. So the first thing I want to do is just get the roots set in terms of where they're going to be. All right, a little bit of an engineering project here. So I've got uh, raffia tied around the base here in two places to stabilize that. And then I put a block in here that has notches on it so that it won't slip as easily. And then I've got a guy wire here. So all of this basically is just to try to bend something here. But at the same time, I also want to count on one of these uh, side branches most likely coming down to begin the the landscape style thing landscape style uh, form and I expect that this center shoot will actually get stronger than these two but I don't know that for sure so I'm just going to leave everything as it is once I finish bending it So if this were a bonsai, that would be completely inadequate. But I think for a landscape style tree that I'm planning on making, say five, six, eight feet tall, uh, it's gonna be perfectly fine. So now on to a little bit of arranging of the roots. Uh, I've got the flat half filled up with my perlite mixture here. And I'm just gonna take these kind of medium sized roots that are uh, kind of all going down because of the shape of the container that it was growing in and kind of splay them out a little bit. There's not that many of them, but this will help kind of start a nabari. All right, so let's review. I have taken it and kind of cut off the bottom third of those roots that I had in the Anderson band. I've secured it to this foundation spike just to give myself kind of like a leverage for bending it because I don't want it to be completely straight. I'm making this into a landscape sized tree, so I'm not too concerned about the, the small bends or whatnot. We can have some straight sections because it's a larger composition and there's room for that. And it will most likely be like an informal upright landscape tree. I've added a, a, a wedge here between the bar and the trunk to give it a little bit of a curve and then pulled the trunk back to the bar. Uh, and I've got the bar secured to the flat as well as propped up so that the flat itself doesn't bend as much. And I've refilled it here with my mixture of perlite and cocoa coir. And I'm going to set this back out in the field to grow for another year and see how it does. I would expect that it will actually slow down because the, the roots that I cut back were in the ground. And it probably will take some time to get reestablished because there's not a lot of fine feeder roots there. Uh, and, but once it gets established, I would imagine that uh, it'll take off again. And at that point, I'll come back and revisit the design in the context of something that is going to be a landscape sized tree. If you have experience starting landscape size bonsai or niwaki, as the proper term in Japanese is, Share it in the comments below and thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.